Assalamu alaikum. In today's video, we'll be looking at the anal canal. We'll be looking at the blood supply, lymphatic drainage, the differences above and below the pectinate line, which is the most commonly asked SEQ in the paper. And then we'll also be looking at certain clinicals, but that will be in part two of the video. Clinicals such as hemorrhoids, anal fissure, anal fistula. And while anal canal is part of the gastrointestinal tract, specifically the hindgut. There are a lot of diseases which affect the hindgut and some of the diseases not only involve the anal canal but the colon and, uh, and the small intestine as well. But the disease we'll be looking at will be exclusive to the anal canal. Now in front of you what you are seeing is a coronal section of the anal canal. The coronal section means that uh, the front and back sides have been split apart and we're seeing the back side actually. These two bones you see here are part of the pelvis, the ischium bones, the right ischium and the left ischium. These are the thick tuberosities in the ischial part on which you sit on. Here you can see clearly the sacrum at the back side, the coccyx bone, and here are the two ischiums. In between them you can see the perianal fat. So in the front view, you can see how the sigmoid turns into the rectum and the rectum becomes the anal canal. Looking closely, while well, since the rectum is in uh, close uh, proximity to the anal canal, there are certain features I want to explain here as well. Here you can appreciate the transverse folds of the rectum. Remember, they are in the rectum and not in the anal canal. And they are three in number. And you can see how the vessels pass through the same transverse folds. We will look at the vessels at the end. As the rectum descends downward further into the pelvis region, here we come up into the anal canal. Now, if you can see closely here, you may notice that the anal canal has specific features. One is the formation of the anal columns and the depressions within them, the anal sinuses. I'll zoom in more closer. These are vascular ridges known as the, column, the anal columns. Between them, these depressions are your anal sinuses. It is in these ridges actually that you have the vessels known as the hemorrhoids. You can see right over here, this vessel is your internal hemorrhoid plexus. And I'm using the word hemorrhoid. A lot of people think hemorrhoid means the disease. It is actually re referring to the dilated vessels. And when those vessels protrude out or become weak, that's when we call them a hemorrhoid disease and that's what people commonly know them as but remember the term actually refers to the vessels so these are the vessels within the ridges and you can see let's give a more closer side view how they're lying within these ridges weakness or dilatation of these vessels causes protrusion and then you have your internal hemorrhoids we'll look into that more in detail in part two aside from this the most important feature about the anal canal is the pectinate line. It is a demarcation and above and below there are several differences. Foremost is the lining, the epithelial lining. Above we have the columnar type epithelium which is distinct for the GIT. Below here since it seamlessly transitions into the skin region, here you have the uh, non-keratinized squamous epithelium but ultimately as it goes outside passing the Hilton's line it will become the keratinized epithelium. Aside from this, another difference you can see here is that below this pectinate line you have your inferior rectal vessels. Above the vessels which are middle and superior rectal, they are supplied in that region and it goes for both artery and vein. They've only shown veins here just to emphasize the hemorrhoids and the lymphatics. Lymphatics from the bottom side drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Above they go into the iliac nodes. Remember that lymph nodes follow the vessels and these vessels middle rectal inferior rectal they all go up and meet into the common iliac which is not really shown as yeah, there we go the left common iliac here and the right common iliac which divide into internal and external the branches here are part of the external here no uh, sorry uh, the external ones no it's really internal yes it is the internal vessels in which you have these veins coming out so, the lymph nodes will be here, the deep lymph nodes. Above the pectinate line, lymph will drain into the respective iliac lymph nodes. 
So the last difference is in the nerves. Outside you have the external pudendal nerve, not visible here. Inside you have your hypogastric plexus, which are basically your splanchnic type nerves, which have the parasympathetic and sympathetic component. The pudendal nerve, on the other hand, is a somatic nerve. So these are the differences that you need to tablet usually in the exam. Aside from this, you have two pyramidal shaped structures beside the anal canal. And some of you might have already guessed, this is your ischio anal fossa. Look at how it is a perfect pyramidal shape. And the boundaries include the obturator internus, laterally, the levator levi, and we get to this in a moment. And down below is usually skin, which is not shown here. Now, these are the fat pads which cushion the anal canal. Absence of these can actually cause prolapse of the anal canal. Here you'll also have the pudendal canal within it, although I doubt they have shown it here, so you have to hide it. Yes, they have not shown the pudendal canal and pudendal vessels passing through. They pass through this ischioanal uh, fossa, but they have shown the fat over here. The muscle over here that you see here, levator and eye, one of the most important muscles which forms part of the pelvic diaphragm. You know, the pelvic diaphragm actually is comprised of multiple muscles. But the levator navi is composed of three, namely puborectalis, which forms a sling around the anal canal, pubococcygeus from the pubis bone to the coccygeus, and the ischiococcygeus as well. Down on the back side, you can see the coccygeus muscle, and I believe they've also shown the piriformis on the back side, which is not visible here. But all of these are forming part of the pelvic diaphragm. But the levator navi is only composed of three, and it is this muscle which actually maintain your fecal continence. A weakness of this muscle can cause the incontinence of stool or a whole prolapse of the anal canal. Other clinical that we'll see include the formation of the anal fistula, which is a communication between the anal canal and the ischioanal fossa, it can cause an abscess here, and a fissure, which is usually due to chronic constipations. The only other notable thing to show here, here we can see the obturator internus muscle on the back side and the fat is over here. And not much else to see here. We move on to the next part of the video.